That's about right. Oh, okay. Finally started. All right. Uh, the last topic in organic we're going to cover. Period. Um, we did the last of the of the uh, uh, mechanisms yesterday. The last topic in organic is trying to put together um, all of these different functional groups which I have on your paper right there. I've never put more than one of these. Maybe I put a methyl and ethyl and chlorine and fluorine into a compound, but I never put more than one of these major functional groups onto a carbon chain and asked you to name it. Okay? In general, there's only one of these major guys. And then we basically, it's so we can have like two methyl, three ethyl, four chloro, and an aldehyde, so and an AL or ONE for a ketone or whatever. What happens when they show up in the same compound, like, for example, that. Could you name him? Sweet yes, sweet mother of crap. There you go. <laughs> it's kind of mixing my metaphors now. All right, what do you do with that? Exactly. And that's what i got to teach you. Get out now. Yeah, run. Now, obviously, uh, I have some work to do. And people near class were calling this the hardest. Why well, you say the hardest thing for last? It's not really the hardest thing. And it's also not going to be worth the most points. However... Um, I'm going to teach you how to name all these guys. Notice I've got some methyl and ethyl groups. I've got an amino group there. I've got a ketone there. I've got a benzene ring here. I've got a double bond there, an OH there. I even have, you don't even realize this, but I've got chains coming off of here that are also chains of, of different magnitudes. How we m name all these things. This is not going to be I have to go to the bathroom, right? What? So, is this going to be like a question on the test? Absolutely. This will be a question on the test. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. Okay, so, as a matter of fact, by the end of the period today, that's the one I'm going to name for you. I'll name a couple of other ones, but I'll name that one. You are going to name it for me. You are going to name it for me. And the answer will not be Frank. It's going to be a real name, like the actual UPAC name. Bacon is not a name either. All right, so let me first go through this with you. Now, you have, now, this takes me a lot less time since I have all the notes and the charts already on your paper in the old days. Again, I would probably have had you copy all this. Now, it would take forever. So that's a good thing because I get to go through this a little faster. However, you have to be able to use this. Are you going to get this chart on the test? Absolutely. I'm not going to make you memorize. I'm not going to make you memorize the precedences or all the suffixes and prefixes, although you already know the suffixes. You know it's called oic acid, AL for an aldehyde, ONE for a ketone. You know all those, okay? What you don't know is which one comes first, all right, and who takes precedence over whom. If you think about it, you do know one precedence one that we've seen before. All right, you know that if I had a compound like this, when I'm talking about taking precedence, this is what I'm talking about. If I have a compound like this, and I have a, a, you know, chlorine over here and a methyl over there, you might think to yourself, well, the shortest numbers possible will be from the right-hand side, correct? But I don't do that because I've got this double bond there. So we already know a little bit about precedences. That's going to take precedence. We're going to have to start from this guy. So even though I would like to call this 1-chloro, 2-methyl, I can't. It's actually going to be 1, 2, 3, 4-methyl, 5-chloro, and then this will be 2. That would be 1 hex, or uh, is that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5? Pentene, 2-pentene, okay? Well... You already know a little bit about it. What happens if I throw, you know, an NH2 on there and uh, an OH on here and something else? Who's going to win? Well, the answer is this tells you who wins every time, and you'll get to use that chart on the test, thank goodness. All right? Now, how do we use it? That's what I need to explain to you. Okay? Here's what you do. In a compound like I just drew, you find the guy who is of the highest precedence. Nobody's going to beat carboxylic acid. By the way, I should preface this. For all these people who may be watching this on YouTube and think I'm an idiot. There are other functional groups besides what exists here, okay? These are the ones you're responsible for. They're the most common, and they're the ones I'm going to expect you to know for the AP exam and for the test, all right? So if you get carboxylic, uh, carboxylic acid somewhere in your chain, and you know what they look like, you've seen them before, nobody beats him. He's tops. So your last, your, he's going to determine which side you start from, and... He's going to end, that guy's going to end in oic acid, no matter what. Okay? Now, here's the problem. Say, I've got an aldehyde in there at the same time. Or a ketone. What do I do? He says I should name, I should end in AL. He says I should name, end in O-N-E. Well, I don't anymore. Wherever the aldehyde was, I put the word formal to indicate him. Or oxo to indicate a ketone. 
or hydroxy, they indicated alcohol. That's probably the easiest one to see. If I had a hydroxy, uh, uh, or hydroxy ion added onto a chain, I would normally end it if it's just this. You know, if it's just that, I would call him one propanol. But if there's something else in here like this, that's a carboxylic acid, now I can't do that. This guy takes precedence. I got to call him three hydroxy propanoic acid. See it? See what I'm saying? Now, the good news is you get this chart. That's the good news. The bad news is you have to be able to use it. And that's what I got to try to teach you how to do with a couple of examples and some other crap along the way. Let's take a look. This example up here. And by the way, I want you to copy this. Just do one at a time. I have to both show up. But do the top one first on the back of your paper. Back of that paper. Let's copy this guy down. I will do this one for you. or actually, I'll do this one with you. And then I want you to uh, then I want you to um, try the next part by yourself. Just draw the top one, please, because I want to do them one at a time. All right. Is everybody good? Uh, it's possible I'm missing a dash somewhere here, right over here. I'm um, sorry. I actually drew these out on uh, today. I was, uh, you know, making these up because I didn't want to have to. I wanted to draw the same ones, and I wanted to have it redrawn drawn already for you. I don't want to be drawing and making mistakes and, and screwing up because that's what I tried doing in the first class, and I realized, you know, I'm making things I can't even name. Uh, it was kind of a pain and making mistakes on it. So I did this ahead of time, tried to put all my dashes around, but like I told you, it's not easy to do that with a word processor. So you tend to forget some. All right, this first guy up here. I need to know who has the top presses of the guys in here. I've got the amino group. I've got, what's that? What did that make him? Ketone. What's that? Alkene. Okay, let's take a look. Who wins? Ketone wins. He's the highest. Ketone, amine, alkene. Okay. So I know the last thing I'm going to write is going to end in O and E. Everybody agree? Yeah. yeah. All right. And uh, the next thing I want to look at at that point, I know it's going to end in O and E. I'll write that over here. O and E. But I need to look at this point. I got to listen to this, guys, because it, it, it may seem like, well, shouldn't it just be then? One, two, three, four, five, six. Hexanone. Hex hexanone, right? Problem is, you should always look next. Once you find the top precedence, are there any double or triple bonds? Because I, I don't want to just put hexanone at this point. What does hexanone imply? The AN tells me what? It's a single bond. So i got to see if there's a double bond in there at this point. Is there? Yeah. Yeah. And I know I start from the side closest to the guy who takes precedence. That's this side. So one, two, three, four. So that's going to be four hexenone. Four hexenone. E N. The four. And by the way, I have to uh, not number this guy. My fault. So I, see, I told you I didn't make mistakes like this. Um, four hexene. I have to number where that double bonded O was. What number was he on? Two. two. To own. Now that's ugly. That is awfully ugly to be writing down. That's your last thing. Four hexene to own. There are times you're going to have to write the just four ene and then keep going after that. It's, a, it's a, such a pain. All right, but that's how you would name the end of this guy. I'm still not done. What else is there here? Yeah, and that would be on the what? One amino. Let's see if I did that right. One amino, four hexene, two own. Excellent. Very good. Can you try this one? And I'll put that guy's hands right there in a minute. By the way, although it's been lied to me before, according to this, the big error message just came up saying, 
it's not recording with audio anymore. So I probably, I wasted the morning one, I'm probably wasting this one, and it's why this is the last one, either way, that's ever going to get taped. I'm using the ones from last year because of this stupid program. No, I will tape the ones we do for review of, uh, but not a whole, all of them have to be taped for the review for the AP exam. Only the ones that are basically new stuff. Find the highest precedence. Find the longest carbon chain. If I had to tell you what your, your order is going to be, I'll write it down over here, just for your own sake. Okay, listen. Your order is going to be longest chain, precedence, highest precedence, and then unsaturation, looking for double or triple box. Okay? Find your longest chain, find your highest precedence, and then find if there's any double or triple bonds. And that will take care of your last word you're going to write. At least get that much right. And write that last word. And there are some tough ones in here. No doubt about it. One in particular is the ether part. I'm sure you're going to be confused on that. There is an ether in there, believe it or not. Yeah, the O and then an R O R. Theoretically, technically, look here, everybody look here for a second. You real everybody knows that an ether is R O R. R O R. Theoretically, that's an ether. How do you name him when he's not the highest precedence, which he's not in this case? Let's see if you can figure it out, but I will be doing it in a second. Happy this is the last day of organic, I hope? Yes. I want everybody to have the last word written at least by now, okay? Because I want to write that one on the board in a second. And get that last word written if you don't already have it. That's wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you Go back to Phillips. Go back to Phillips. I'm sure that's where you guys came from. We'll be back. Don't Go. worry. That's not real. <laughs> He's right. I have no idea if this thing exists. <laughs> True. All right. Let's see if you got the last word right at, at, at this point. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You have hept, right? Yes. Everybody have hept for the last word? So the last thing I'm going to write is going to be hept. Okay. What's the highest precedence of the guys in there? Yeah, uh, the carboxylic acid. So, again, i got to be careful here. Um, I'm going to erase that one. Hept. I, I know it's going to end in oic acid, but I don't know if it's going to be an or en, right? What is it going to be? Is there a triple bond in there? Yeah. yeah. On the one, two, three, third one. So three heptene oic. Oops, there's no, there's no dash there. Just oic. That's why. Oh, right, right, right. It's a triple bond, not a single bond. And not, a, not a double bond. Heptine oic acid. Is that ugly or what? Three heptine oic acid. Now, you might say, well, the last time I had to have a number for the O, why don't I have to have a number for the carboxylic acid? Because it can only be on the one. So, okay. Three heptinoic acid. Oof, that's ugly. Keep going. Keep going from there. Two oxo. Ah, very good. But not two. Oh, yeah, no, no, I'm sorry. Two oxo, right. One, two, right? Yes. That's what you're looking at? Yes, yes. And then I have five hydroxy. Five hydroxy. That should be an easy one. One, two, three, four, five hydroxy. And then I have six alkoxy. Ah, good one. That same thing happened in your class. This is an alkoxy group. But specifically, what alkoxy is he? Um, methoxy. methoxy. You would call him methoxy. 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 The alkox, al the, the, the abbreviation alkoxy is a generic term. 
alk, meaning some length of carbons, right? Uh, could be meth, oxy, eth, oxy, whatever. Is it still fixed though? Because it would be one, two, three, four, five. Five. It's on the fifth one. Five. You treat him as if, look, you all agree this was five hydroxy, correct? So this is five, it's not the same carbon, methoxy. You just treat him like another substitution. And then it's going to go... I think you're almost done at that point. Or are you, maybe uh, you're already two, not three. Oh, no, we're done. Is that what you got? No, we put methoxy. Ah, uh, I want to I point something out to you right here. Theoretically, technically, it should go in alphabetical order. Okay? I will not take off. Do not erase... If you have 5-hydroxy anywhere in here, I don't care. If you have 5-methoxy anywhere in there, I don't care. If you have 2-oxo in the beginning, I don't care. Theoretically, it should be alphabetic order. H comes before M comes before O. Okay? You teach us. But, and I did tell you that in the past. We've done that. However, I am and the test not going to take off for that because we're going to get ones that are, by the time I'm done here, well, here's one over here, that long. And I don't want to have to waste that much time on a test, not only writing them all out, and then organizing them into alphabetic order. So that's going to be a pain. Okay. Yeah, question. Uh, what, 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 time? Uh, what happens to that ethyl group right there? It's not an ethyl group. Great, terrible answer. Question. Great question, though, but, but a bad one. The very first thing we learned when we were back on those computers a month and a half ago oh, is the, right. the yeah. longest carbon chain. Is this great mistake? Very good. Always glad to hear those. And it just goes to show you. By the way, I've got other things like this that are going to happen as we go along here. It goes to show you every time I teach you something new, it kind of pushes out something old. And that's not really true. It doesn't push it out. You just kind of forget to use it. That stuff didn't go away. You got to still be able to use that stuff that you learned. Okay, like finding the longest carbon chain. All right, good enough. Well, that was fun, but not really. Um, well, it's even worse than this, guys. Okay. It's even worse. Watch this as I talk about this next thing. Turns out, if you look here, I can have, I'm going to be about to go over some comments. No, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, let, me, let me save that for a minute. Um, the next thing in your notes is common names. All right. Now, I am not going to expect that you memorize every one of these common names. I just wanted to kind of put them all in one place because they're ones that we've seen throughout this year. They're ones that you will see in college, almost guaranteed. You're going to use these kind of chemicals. They're not going to necessarily call methanoic acid methanoic acid. They're going to call it formic acid. Form, for whatever reason, is used, even though it's not the UPAC system, is used more often, kind of like acetic is used more often, than is the actual UPAC system. So I wanted to give these all to you in one place. I'm not going to ask you to understand, I'm not going to memorize all of these for this test, but I just wanted to put them down. Uh, we've seen, these are all ones that we've seen somewhere past, in the past. We saw amyl when we were doing our ester lab. You remember? Amyl and amyl alcohol. Okay, that means it was five carbons long. Phenyl is another name for a benzene ring. So if you have a benzene ring, okay, a benzene ring is a phenyl. If it's onto a long chain, I've got a, phenyl, a benzene ring on there. Instead of calling it, you know, one and then talking about the whole big long chain that's coming off of this thing, I just call him a substitution group on that chain. You know, so if I have a carbon chain that's going off, you know, I can call this guy three phenyl, you know, whatever, two methyl, four, I'll keep going on from that. You see what I'm saying? So he just, you can treat him like a group. Uh, you've seen, um, this, when we we're talking about our soap lab, which we have to finish up after uh, Thanksgiving, um, 17 carbons long. Glycerol, we saw also in the soap lab and one other time. Glycerol basically just looks like this. And you should draw this guy down next to him. That's glycerol. And you should draw the fennel next to the benzene ring next to him, where I drew him. The other guys, I have stuff already written there for you. That's glycerol which is basically 1, 2, 3, propane triol. And we use that quite a bit. And there's one other one that you run into quite a bit too, and that is uh, laurel, 
which means 12 carbons long. And again, we saw that, I believe, somewhere else. Also, we're talking about fats and oils and making our soap. Now, there's something else you should know. It's positions, ortho, meta, and para. Draw them. Okay? I mean, we just put them all in one chart for you, one sheet for you. Some stuff that you really should know. The ortho positions, where they're next to each other, meta in the middle, right? And para opposite. The ones with the OH that you have, is that for the steer? What do you think it's for? The steer. No. Does it have 17 carbons? Does it have 12 carbons? Is it a benzene ring? So what would you narrow that down to be? Yeah. And it's an alcohol that has OHs. And we saw it two other times. And I said that when I wrote that. But okay. All right. Draw these. Draw your uh, ortho, meta, and para positions. Because they don't have to be, for example, this is um, ortho xylene, meta xylene, and para xylene. They don't have to be xylenes. Uh, they could be two chlorines there. Be ortho, uh, you know, para dichlorobenzene, uh, meta dichlorobenzene, or ortho dichlorobenzene. Mr. Phillips wants to be on camera as well, apparently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Try naming that guy. Yeah, Frank. Don't erase those. There you go. Now, what is that? Impossible. That's what that is. It's got an oxygen with only one bond coming off. Now, if I put another carbon here, what would it be? We need an ether. But we already have an ether. We like two ethers. Ether on it. Yeah, Either or. Either squared. <sighs> Mr. Phillips, he's, he missed his calling as a chemistry teacher. All right. This, you know what? I'm never going to be able to have an actual tape of this thing. It's okay, though. Last year, the same thing happened. Couldn't get one good tape out of this. This year, not so far. I mean, maybe the, probably have no sound. Talking to myself right now, most likely. All right. The last thing, the second page you got there. Okay? Got to go through this. <laughs> Here's where I want to, that last page you just had, pretty much anything that I would give you there um, on that top chart will be given to you. I'm going to give you that chart for the precedences, okay, and the suffixes of prefixes. As far as the common names, most of those you're not going to have to actually know. I mean, obviously you have to know some of them. You have to know what a benzene is. You have to know what the ortho, meta, and para are. But for the most part, you don't know a laurel or a steric or any of those sort of things. This is an interesting little thing, what I'm going to talk about next. Turns out that if I draw a compound a chain, and I have a group, an alkyl group coming off of him, I could have that alkyl group coming off the same number of carbons differently, and I kind of have to have a way to be able to identify them differently. Let me show you. I can have this. I can have this. I can have this. Oops, sorry. Can't do it there. Can't do it there. I can have this. Okay, and there's others. In every case, I've got four carbons coming off of this chain, don't I? Every case, I've got four carbons. See, you probably would have called this guy, you know, one, two, three, four, five, five butyl, right? Five methyl, five ethyl, five propyl, five butyl. Let's be five butyl. But what is this then? If not, 4-butyl, and this will be 3-butyl. How do I distinguish this from this from this when they're all butane? They're all, not butane, but they're all four carbons coming off the chain in different ways. That's what I'm going to teach you how to do as well today. And you're going to use these prefixes to distinguish them. Also, you'll find, again, you saw it when I had that bottle of N-amyl alcohol out there. You're going to find that we use these common naming tr tricks pretty often in chemicals that you're going to be using in college. Okay? Instead of calling it one pentanol, it will probably be called n amyl alcohol. And I'll try to explain that to you as we do some examples. N as a prefix in front of a group, in front of a bunch of carbons, generally means this, a straight chain. Whoops. means a straight chain. An alkyl group that forms a single unbranched chain and you're attaching something at the end of that chain. Let me show you some examples. 
The first one being the guy that we used in our Esther lab. And amyl alcohol. What is an amyl alcohol? It is another way of saying a compound that you would be able to name very easily if I named it by its UPAC system. Copy him down, and I'll show you what he is. Then we'll do another one on your own. Everybody got an amyl co copy down? Hurry up, come on. You guys have to write faster. Worst thing that ever happened to you people, worst day of school, that's not the worst thing, believe me. But one of the things that's happened to education over the past 30 years is that no, absolutely no, writes the script anymore. You all write, and does. You all write, print, you all print. And printing takes so much longer. Remember, uh, what, what test were you guys taking, Mr., uh, all the guys who were, who were giving that test? You had to write out that statement. PSAT. Yeah, PSAT. 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 It's unbelievable. But the worst, you ask people what was the worst part of the three hour PSAT test? Having to write and script. You couldn't, you couldn't print. It didn't even know how to make half the letters. It's an amazing thing. Oh, I knew how I'm just saying, it's an amazing thing. I, but I want you to realize that I've said this before in Chem 1, I'm saying it again now. When you go to college, you're going to have to write fast. You're going to have to keep up. You're not. You're going to have a class of 500 people. Now you say, "Oh, well, that's not true." Some people are going to give me their notes anyway. They're going to hand out the powerpoints. And I know a lot of professors do that now nowadays. That's even worse. If you're not writing anything down, then you just don't, you stop going to class. You stop paying attention. You just get that vacant look in the eyes there. All right, and you stop listening. Assuming you're taking notes, and you should be, especially when you're doing problems like this, you need to do it faster. All right, you can't just worry about penmanship. Why Jared takes that long is beyond me, because his penmanship also sucks. So, but he still takes that long. <laughs> I don't understand that, but whatever. Alright, here. This is an amyl alcohol. Amyl means five. N means a straight chain, where the point of attachment of whatever it is we're at attaching is at the end. That is an amyl alcohol. No, N does not mean one. N means a straight chain of carbons, however long it tells you it is, where the point of attachment of whatever you're adding to it is at the end. It does not mean one in any way, shape, or form, unless you want to say that it means it's on the first carbon something yeah. else is there. It doesn't mean one. It has to have all those factors included. Okay? It has to be a straight chain. Something can be on the end and not the end, as I'll show you in a little bit. Okay? So, could you tell me what this guy's name would be? Well, you're going to be surprised by this. Okay, draw that guy. The crazy part about this is, I have, both of these guys could have been named by the UPAC system, and you would be correct. I think everybody would know that what's the name of this first guy right here? One pentanum, correct. What was the name of this guy be according to the UPAC name? One chlorobutane. Correct. Unfortunately, when you use this system, when you use this prefix, you're not treating it as if the chlorine is a substitution group onto that. You're treating it the exact opposite way. You're not going to call this one chlorobutane. You're going to call this N butyl chloride. I know. Just like you called that guy an amyl alcohol. It's the butyl, the amyl, the pentyl, the propyl. It's the methyl group that's acting like a substituent onto the other thing. It's weird. We don't like it. So I'm showing it to you because you will see it. So they don't use it with, like, water change? Generally, no. Exactly. Uh, once you get over a certain length, usually five or at the most six, you stop. You don't really, it becomes cumbersome to be able to do this. All right, I think six is the maximum you're going to use in ISO. That's going to be the last one I'm going to give you, ISO. Um, but I can do this for four. It really was used a lot for four, for butte. 
It's also used for, for three for probe. Uh, a great deal, and even for pentel. All right, so let's look at the next one and see if we can do this next one. SEC. SEC is a little bit easier. This one actually, people kind of get this one pretty quickly. SEC is an alkyl group where the point of attachment is on a secondary carbon. So, for example, if I asked you to do this guy, what would you, using the logic from before, what would you call this guy? Using the logic from just a minute ago, not, don't tell me it's called 2-chlorobutane. I know it's 2-chlorobutane. I know that's the correct answer. But would you recognize this also as, if so, you read a bottle of it, would you recognize this as what? 2-chlorobutane. Um, oh, my God. For those of you at home, after, you got to rewind. And he listened to me say, I don't want you to name this 2-chlorobutane two or three times, and then get two people blurt out 2-chlorobutane. Those of you who couldn't hear that. Just got to tell Sec butyl chloride. Exactly. Wow. Wow. I wasn't listening. I, was I know you weren't listening, and I know you were writing, which goes right back to what I was saying. You weren't writing fast enough, and you're not paying attention because you didn't get done quick enough. Well, yeah, it's a time ridiculous. You start talking as soon as you open up. Oh the my god! It's, it's because you got it after you yelled at us. Yeah. No, I had a point. Taking point two seconds. Wow! It is amazing. This should go up on, uh, oh, I really hope your sound. I really hope your client is in front of it. All right, set butyl chloride. Um, if I made this guy, don't do this. I don't need to do another one. If I made this guy an alcohol, what would you call him then? Set butyl alcohol. Alcohol, yeah. <laughs> See, it's weird. I know, uh, and by the way, you know, this is the only test you're going to see these on. You're not going to see a heck of a lot of it. I'm going to ask on the test ones like this, and they'll be worth maybe 10 points total on the test for this entire section. It's not easy. It's a pain in the neck, um, but it's not worth that many points. All right. Let's. By the way, sec for secondary, right? That makes sense. It was attached to the secondary carbon. Sec doesn't mean the singular of sex, like male and female. Okay. Okay. okay, turt, which is not short for turd. Turt, not turt, tertiary, right? What are you going to put for tertiary? What do you think happens in a tertiary? Not third, not third, not third. Tertiary carbon, which you know there's a big difference between third carbon, this is the third carbon in the chain, Right there is a third carbon in the chain, all right, versus a tertiary carbon in the chain, okay? Like, that would be a tertiary carbon right there, right? Oh, yes, it is. Yes. You circled below the carbon. I don't know. But okay. <laughs> Whatever. All right. The board was off. <laughs> I can blame it on the board. We probably could. Nah, I, in this board, normally I can, but not today. That was me. Are you going to talk now? Yeah. Then, Notice... I always wait at least a little bit for you to get most of this copy. No. You don't notice that because you're too busy copying. <laughs> I almost got it. I almost made I know. All right. And this guy, it has to be uh, the point of attack has to be a tertiary carbon, which means if I've got, if I give you this name, if I say tert butyl chloride, you have to kind of think about this. We have done a chloride for each of these. We did N-butyl chloride, we did sex-butyl chloride, and now we're doing tert-butyl chloride. Okay? Now, some of you are going to say, well, I, there is no tertiary carbon in a butane. You're right. The butyl, actually, in this case, doesn't really mean it's butane, as in a straight chain. It can't be, or you're not going to have a tertiary one. The butyl means there are four of them. How can I arrange four carbons so that I will have a tertiary? I gotta have one up here. Exactly. That is tert butyl chloride. I hate my life. I know. I hear you. I hear you. 
And if you think that's bad, and it is, it just drives me crazy when we get to this last one. The last one. Y'all got that copy? Yeah, so would that be 15 or would they go turf? Well, when we get to 15 over here, when we get to 15, no. You're going to see in a second. There's one other possibility, people. Let's draw them. You ready? Look here. Everybody, shh, look. There's this guy. There's this guy. There's this guy. Is there one other possibility? Yes, there is. Ah, uh, yeah. You say, well, isn't that tert? No. The point of attachment isn't on the tertiary one, even though he's arranged that way. The point of attachment is over here. What do we call that guy? Iso. Yeah, we call him ISO. Wait till you see. This is, I'm going to have to stop talking. Maybe just shut the camera off for like 20 minutes, because wait till you see this definition come up. I tried. Years ago when I made these notes up, I tried to find an easy way of saying the definition of ISO. All the other ones, pretty short sentence, even though it took you a long time to write. This is the definition of ISO. Ah, don't write, don't write, just wait, just wait, wait. It's an alkyl group of six carbons or less, in which all the carbons but one form a continuous chain. And the one carbon that does it is on the next to last carbon of the chain. Yeah, that's the best way I can come up with writing the definition of ISO. Sorry, I am limited. We'll see you next period. Yeah, exactly. I'll stop talking now. What do you want to do with a couple examples while we're copying? Yeah. People at home are saying, please stop talking. Trent, please say, say hi to Trent for a while. Trent! Oh, uh, you're not watching us. He's not watching us. If you can this. hear us. Yeah, if you can, if you can still hear us. No, he's not watching us. Why? Yeah, I'm gonna, we're going to start with the AP stuff with him. He's already done enough with the organic. Most of that stuff, well, well, you, as you guys know, most of this stuff isn't on the AP exam. All right? Most of the stuff I've been doing with mechanisms is so not on exactly the AP exam. So what exactly works Does he have to take all these tests he's missing? Yeah. He's had to take, he's not as far behind as you think. He, was, he, took, the, he took the test uh, for the reactions, I think, or whatever ones. So he's just going to miss like a test. And it, I'll just grade it without it. It's not a problem. Wait, he's not going to have to take this test? No, no. Oh. Yeah, well, coming back. I don't know, after Thanksgiving. Christmas. Uh, All right, everybody done with this yet? Come on, come on. We're good. Let's move on. Well, i got to do an example of this guy. Yeah. Which I already did. That guy would be called what? So okay, so here I am writing the wrong thing. This is isobutyl chloride. Isobutyl chloride is correct. Give that man a cigar. All right. Thank, back in the days, you could give cigars away. Fair. Not anymore. Isobutyl chloride. I'm so confused. So, you're not confused. All right. Can you identify these guys as what they are? Yeah. All right, those are your possibilities. And basically it all comes down to, now, might wonder, might wonder to yourself, do I need to use this in other places? And the answer is yes. Let me show you with the example I'm about to do, what you're going to do um, uh, at the end of the period. Okay? Which are basically at the beginning of the next period, so we'll take a little break. All right. Look, look up here, because I'm going to shut the computer off in a second. Okay. Uh, look up here at this guy. Okay. Now, where does what I just taught you come into play for these guys? It doesn't come into play for him or him or him or him or him or him or him. It comes into play for him and for him. Okay. Why? Because here, I've got a butyl group, but it's a tert butyl group, right? Here, I've got a butyl group, but it's a sec butyl group. So you would call this guy, depending on which side you start from, I would think you're going to start from this side, because he's going to be the highest precedence. One, two, three, four, five sec butyl. Then you do your next thing. This guy would be one, two, three tert butyl, and so on. 
Okay? That's what you can do when you... I'm going to turn off the camera. That's what you can do when you get back. And uh, we'll do that answer. And we love our lives.